with Bitcoin, it's 24 seven, you can trade it whatever you want. So that's where, where I say is kind of the difference between gold and silver. Um, in terms of what is backing Bitcoin, uh, mainly it's kind of the trading volume and then the entrance, it's a fiat gateway into other cryptocurrencies. Yeah, so I don't think Bitcoin itself as, as a currency, it, it's not something that I would go out and spend it. There's just too many problems with the volatility. There's actually very slow transaction speeds. For me, what I look at is the technology itself, how that can be applied to other use cases in the world, uh, which we'll go into, I'm sure, later. And that is where I look. So I, I don't actually have that much Bitcoin. I actually look at Ethereum. I look at the decentralized finance projects of where Ethereum is going. And there's a lot of startups that are trying to scale blockchain technology as well that I look into, into also. Uh, so as an investor in Bitcoin, uh, I would just put that as a diversification piece. I wouldn't say that's like something to go all in that I'm going to use to spend as a global currency. That's not the case. So you wouldn't invest in it because it's going to go to 100,000. I do not think it's going to go to 100,000. I, I understand that, but you, would, you wouldn't use that that logic. No, that's what people that's do. That's logic. Yeah. But you know, see, people do that with silver and gold. Mm -hmm. You know, people are, you know, like they're calling for $50,000 gold and $20,000 silver. And that sucks a lot of people in. Yep. So what would you say to that? So somebody says, Bitcoin's going to 100,000. Why would you say that's a bad idea or you, you wouldn't touch it? I, I can give a few data points as to what happens with the other countries that have infl uh, currency crashes. They actually fled to Bitcoin as a safe haven because it's one way to get out, right? You could buy Bitcoin, it holds its currency against a USD. And then if their currency goes hyperinflation, they still have some, some digital asset that can be traded. Although again, it's just on a USB drive or it's on a piece of paper, but it, at least they can flood to that as a safe haven. Uh, with gold and silver, it's actually kind of hard to trade it for some people globally. Uh, with Bitcoin, it's 24 seven, you can trade it whatever you want. So that's where, where I say is kind of the difference between gold and silver. Um, in terms of what is backing Bitcoin, uh, mainly it's kind of the trading volume and then the entrance, it's a fiat gateway into other cryptocurrencies. So I'll, I'll let you take over from here because you guys are way over my head. I have some Ethereum. What is Ethereum? So Ethereum takes blockchain technology and it added a concept called smart contracts. So basically I could create a smart contract between you and me, Robert. It's just a, a, a auditable piece of code that we can send money to. And let's say you're paying me salary hundred dollars a week for whatever, just to be on the phone to call you. So you can just put in $10,000 in this smart contract and it'll automatically pay me. There'll be no bank in between. There's nothing in between at all. Me and you could just operate on this small little piece of code that does any mainstream thing. So people took that concept and they built entire applications on it. So entire applications that can do almost anything. Uh, it's a little bit slow right now, so it's not shown any real value in the world yet, but the, <laughs> the advancements of Ethereum 2.0, which are coming later this year, are trying to remedy that problem. Okay. So Jeff, you know, my concern as an old guy is what's to prevent all everybody from just coming out with their own crypto. Like, you know, what's this Facebook has that, what do they have now? It, it might help to kind of talk about the advancements of cryptocurrency through the years. Uh, 2017, 2018, when we saw the, the heights of the bubble, uh, we saw it was like a year of speculation. People thought this, is, this technology would change the world, but no one really knew why. So all these startups came up to fruition. They had initial coin offerings, ICOs. People had this value creation from thin air, from just ideas, from just white paper, right? But money did fly into the ecosystem. A lot of smart people were in there making these startups. And then 2019 hit, we kind of figured out, well, is there a product market fit? Nobody is really gonna use this if it comes out, right? So a lot of money then came out of crypto. So right now, there's the only form of investing in crypto right now that's popular is the initial exchange offering, the IEO. And those are still very profitable and that's stuff we talk about in the newsletter. But right now is a globalization on this technology. Just this year, the World Economic Forum published the CBDC framework. CBDC stands for Central Bank Digital Currency. So it actually is teaching all these countries how to make their own cryptocurrencies. China has been ahead of the curve the whole time. They are coming out with theirs this year, very likely. They already have a pilot out. Theirs is called DECP, Digital, uh, sorry, Digital Currency Electronic Payment, DCEP.